Flashback seven years. I was 10 years old. Standing on the steps of the church after Christmas Eve Mass, I held my dad's hand tightly, impatiently tugging at him. I just wanted to go home. All I could think about were all those presents with my name on them under the tree and the huge feast I was going to enjoy with my family and the laughter, the celebration, and of course that warm, cozy bed that my parents were going to tuck me into at the end of the night. Turning around, I saw these two little girls walking towards us. But they were in ragged clothing. They had dirty faces, looking really hopeless. I realized that they were homeless, impoverished, children who had come to beg for money. The world stopped. Everything was suddenly put into perspective. I broke down crying, not understanding how this could be so unfair, so wrong, that here I was, standing well-dressed, thinking about the food and the presents and my bed, and yet, right in front of me, were two little girls the same age as I was who didn't even have enough money to eat for that night. To this day, I can still see their faces. That was the moment that planted the seed. That was the moment when I discovered the strong passion that lived within me, my desire to make a change and to help them out of their situation. I'm first-generation American, as my mother is from England and my father is from Peru. And since a little girl, um, we have been visiting the country annually, and this has allowed me to build to to create a strong connection with Peru, with the country itself, you know, the culture, the language, my family there. But one of the things that is in your face, that is absolutely unavoidable, is the poverty. And multiple experiences during my visits, starting out with the one that I just shared, bothered me more and more each year. I'd always brought clothes to give to the needy families, but this didn't feel like enough. I thought maybe food or money, but I mean, these are great things, but they're only temporary band-aids that are not going to fix the underlying problem. Finally, I realized what I could give back to them. What would make a difference? Education. A sustainable tool that will change their lives and most importantly, last a lifetime. I know that my education has brought me to where I am today, that I'm able to stand up here on the stage and communicate my ideas to you because of that education. So that's what I wanted to give back to them. In 2009, I founded Mi Casa de Angeles, which means My House of Angels, a 501c3 nonprofit organization that focuses on raising money and awareness towards our ultimate goal of building a school that will provide a higher quality of education for the needy children in Peru so that they can become empowered, given confidence, And most importantly, given a chance to succeed and break the barriers of poverty that hold them back every single day. I know that I cannot change the entire public education system in Peru, but if I can change the life of one child, the lives of two children, of a hundred children, that's all that matters. So I began researching how I could fight poverty with education. And I discovered something very interesting. For the past 10 years, Peru's economy has been growing despite this world economic downturn. From 2000 to 2010, Peru's economy grew from a $50 billion economy to a $150 billion economy. And projections say that in 2014, this number will be about $200 billion. But despite this economic growth, the public education system remains broken. A survey was done to assess the primary and secondary education systems of 145 countries around the world. And in the same 10 years that Peru's economy tripled, the educational ranking only moved three spots, from 138th to 135th out of 145 countries. That's the bottom of the ladder. And while subpar facilities and a 7% illiteracy rate are two main problems, the biggest problem is the low quality, poorly trained teachers. Eight in every 10 teachers in public schools are often partially illiterate 
and struggle doing basic math problems. Simply put, if these teachers cannot teach, the students are not going to learn. And it's, it's so frustrating to me that a country can be doing so well economically, and yet they are completely neglecting the education of their future generation. And I mean, this is a generation that's going to be contributing to this economy in a few years from now. It's interesting, once you become aware of an issue, you naturally notice it more. On my last trip to Peru in May, I was sitting eating breakfast in the kitchen in my uh, Peruvian family's home, and I looked over at Vicky. And Vicky is my Peruvian fam family's empleada, which means housemaid. And I watched her, she was making the grocery list, and she was staring intently at the cereal box in front of her and some other canned goods. And she wasn't copying down letters or words. But instead, she was drawing out shapes and lines, trying to make it into something legible. And I realized in that moment that Vicky was illiterate. A woman I had known for 17 years, who had taken care of me on all of my trips to Peru, did not know how to read or write. And I can tell you for a fact that this was not a result of a lack of desire, because I know Vicky is one of the hardest workers. This was simply a result of a lack of opportunity, a lack of education. But I know that a better quality education will diminish this illiteracy among future generations of this, of this impoverished population. So I can really pull together my personal goals in what I call the three E's. First, educate. Education is the most sustainable tool that I can give these children. But not any type of education a higher quality of education, one with, a, with, one with better quality teachers, better resources, that is what is going to make the difference. Secondly, empower. I truly believe that education empowers. I had the opportunity to visit a public school in one of the shanty towns in Lima, Peru, and while I was there, I met this kid named Marco. And after hanging out with him that day, he asked me to teach him something in English. And so I taught him two simple phrases. Hello, my name is Marco, and I'm 11 years old. And I mean, these are basic phrases we could say that we use on a daily basis. But they meant the world to him. I mean, his face lit up, his attitude changed. I mean, the confidence was pouring out of him as he ran around the playground telling all of his friends he knew how to speak English. I mean, this is absolutely adorable. And I mean, that right there, that proves to me that even the simplest form of education empowers. Lastly, I want to enthuse. I want to inspire the social conscience of all of those around me. Those who are younger, those who are older, my peers. I believe it's really important that everybody finds something that they're passionate about and that they take action. Don't wait until you're older. Don't wait until you're retired or you have a successful career, you're making lots of money, so you have a lot to give back. Don't wait. Do it now and aim high. Aside from having the support of my family and my friends, about 600 people have come together to support Mi Casa de Angeles and our efforts. And this is across the nation, in Peru, mostly here in our community. And they, I mean, whether it's volunteering or attending events or donating, they believe in what we are doing, and they are acting in the name of togetherness. The desire to give back lies within each and every person. Sometimes people just need the opportunity to give back. I've never built a school. I've never raised $500,000. Never done what I'm trying to do right now but I know one thing for sure. I'm passionate, I'm determined, and people have done this before, so how hard can it be? <laughs> Is it going to take time? Yes. Am I gonna have difficulties, frustrations? Of course. Am I gonna need the help of others working by my side towards this goal? Absolutely. But the reward, 
the reward of changing the lives of these children, of making an impact in their education, will certainly outweigh all of the effort that myself and others can put into this. Together, we are going to change their lives with education.